Sing, O Muse, of great Achilles and his wrath, which brought such woe on the men of Greece and Troy alike. Sing of mighty warriors who fell on the naked shore, whose unburied limbs devouring dogs and hungry vultures tore. Sing of princes answering honor's call, of mortal men defying gods and fate. Recall for us the age of heroes, where combat marked the man. Tell us of the age when single warriors with the strength of armies stood firm and defied the will of deceitful gods. Remind us, lest we forget, of the long cruel years when Grecian and Trojan blood mingled in the dry earth in a war that tore the world asunder. Have they seen us? They have. Can you taste it? I do not talk of the salt in the air, but the blood of Trojans on the edge of your swords. Honor compels us to this land, but glory awaits you. Ready your arms! Battle worthy of legend, is it not? Victory over a wooden beast. Still, it was a victory. And many more await us. Troy's days are numbered. The longer it takes to save this Spartan queen, the better. Such was the beginning of the end of Troy. On that sad day, her shining shores were ravaged by the savage thunder of a thousand ships, carrying the kings and princes of Greece, led by Agamemnon, king of Mycenae, like Charon leading the dead across the river Styx into the jaws of Hydes. Hail, Odysseus, and well met. We've got the Trojans on the run. We, you, King Agamemnon, stayed in the safety of your Achilles. Ship. Mind your tongue, Achilles. We all answer to my brother, Agamemnon. Never mind him, Menelaus. Achilles forgets that some men are built for combat, some to lead. And some are so... What would you have us do, King Agamemnon? I'm relying on all of you to secure the area around our future camp. Waste no time. Now, brother, we must see about the unloading of our ships. There is much to be done. Why would the kings of the Ithacans, Myrmidones, Salaminioi, Mykanaioi, and many more set sail in a thousand ships to lay siege against the fair city of Troy? It was in Sparta, many years ago, that the spark was lit. Those same kings were assembled together not to wage war, but to compete for the love of the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen daughter of Tyndarios, king of Sparta. 
It seems you have a problem to solve, King Tindarius. Ah, welcome, my friend, Odysseus, King of Utica. Indeed, I do. I am to choose one of them to be my daughter's husband. But I'm afraid that once I make my choice... The others might feel cheated and cause trouble. Indeed. I've refused all their gifts. They show no undue preference. I cannot send them away for fear of losing friendships and creating enemies. Happily, I am not part of your problem. My heart is already taken by Penelope. Have you asked my brother for his daughter's hand? I may need your help in that regard. Next challenger! These games won't decide who wins Helen's hand. She has asked me to choose Menelaus. I do not want to refuse her. What can I do? I think I may have the solution to your problem. But in return, I need your help persuading your brother to relinquish the hand of the lovely Penelope. <laughs> Always the schemer, Odysseus. <laughs> If you can help secure a peaceful marriage for my Helen, then I will intercede in your name for Penelope's hand. It's very simple. What you need is an oath. An oath? To be given by all of them before you announce your choice. Ah, an oath. What kind of an oath? I swear before the princes of the world and the Olympians in the sky. I swear before the princes of the world and the Olympians in the sky. To protect the marriage of Helen, Queen of Sparta, no matter who shall be her husband. To protect the marriage of Helen, Queen of Sparta, no matter who shall be her husband. So were the kings of Greece tricked into peace by a simple oath. Menelaus, you are my husband. And the gods laughed at these simple acts of men, for they knew that within that simple oath was soul, the tragedy that would launch the thousand ships. What happened next will be debated until the end of time. Some say Helen willingly left her husband to follow Paris back to Troy. Others insist he abducted her against her will. Helen, I cannot leave here with just the memory of the last few days. Come with me to Troy. But I must take pause and leave the story of Prince Paris for another time. I will then tell you of Aphrodite's treachery and the young prince's folly. Who can blame and allow us for claiming his right to retribution? Enraged, he called on the kings and princes of Greece to honor their oath with promises of rich plunder and treasure. So was assembled the greatest army the world had ever seen. And together they set sail for Troy under the leadership of powerful Agamemnon, Menelaus's brother, King of Mycenae. The mighty walls of Troy loomed above the Greeks and dashed any hope of a quick and easy war. Those who retreated behind the impregnable walls found refuge and safety. Many of those who were caught outside either found solace in a cruel and sudden death or abject desperation in lifelong slavery. The Trojans rallied. They stormed out of their gates in defense of their homes, their families, their king. Fiercer blood runs through the veins of those who defend, and fiercer still runs the blood to the veins of men when they follow a great leader like Hector, the greatest of Priam's sons. He was the one who led his men in aid of those still beyond the walls.
One of the Myrmidonis. Be on your guard, Hector. Their reputation is not exaggerated. You must be a Trojan prince, brother to the snake. <laughs> Curse you, son of Troy. We'll meet again. And yet, why did Priam not return Helen to Menelaus, her husband? So much suffering, so many lives would have been spared. Nothing simple is ever easy. Fear and doubt fester secretly in the hearts of men, condemning their lives into the darkness of guilt. So was Priam guilty of a sin which he hid from all who knew him until his shameful act reared its dark head and came back to face him and demand retribution. It happened years before the war, when the gods looked favorably upon Troy and showered it with peace and plenty. That year, the altars were kept burning with offerings to the gods. King Priam sought the best bull in the land and offered it as a prize in a tournament. It was a great day. The first day of the end. People of Troy, Alexandros the Shepherd! Quite a beauty, isn't he? It's my bull, stolen from my herd. <laughs> it's a prize offered by King Priam for the games. Are you saying the king stole it? His servants did, to keep the gold they were to buy it with. It's my bull. Well, if you want to get it back, you've got quite a challenge on your hands. That is Deiphobus, Prince of Troy. I hear he's the finest swordsman of Priam's many sons. And Hector, the eldest prince. Sparring against common men was an easy task. But facing Deiphobus was too much of a risk for Alexandros. Instead of competing for the bull against Troy's champions, the young shepherd untied the ropes holding the beast and pulled it out of the arena. Deiphobus would not stand for this insult and went after the young man. Alexandros fled through the streets of Troy to the altar of Zeus where he hoped to find sanctuary. What? The lost son of Priam has returned. Don't speak to me of my lost son. Your delusions have brought me enough pain already, Cassandra. He is your son. Young man, who is your father? My father was Agalaus, a shepherd, as am I. Agalaus? He was a valued servant in my court. The man I trusted to take my Paris. You are the torch which brings fire and death to Troy. Great king! King Priam! Father! Oh, forgive me, O oh great king. Have mercy. I, I could not bring myself to do what you asked of me. Have mercy on him. It is I, I who should be punished for disobeying you, sire. Never has disobedience been so welcome. It's true. The day you were born, Isakos, the sacred seer, foretold that you would be the ruin of Troy. His words were never false. So I ordered Agalaus to take the child from his crib and end his life. From this moment on, you are a true prince of Troy, my Paris and none shall ever threaten you again.
So as Paris returned to Priam's household, the Shepherd Prince became known throughout the Troas and was envied for his beauty and strength. It was Aphrodite, goddess of love, who years later drove Paris to Sparta and into Helen's arms, kindling a love that ignited a fire that consumed the world. How could Priam refuse anything his son asked of him? It was with a heavy heart that he welcomed Helen when Paris brought her to Troy. Guilt so easily forces men to act against their own interests. The people of Troy took pause to think, to doubt, to wait. They knew it was only a matter of time, that there was a price to pay for a father's love, a father's guilt towards his forgotten son. They did not wait for long. Helen watched the battle waged in her name, and felt the rage against her, same as a dying beast sees vultures circling above it, waiting for their time to feast on its carcass. Likewise did Paris endure the scorn from Greek and Trojan alike. He was not only the cause of all their misery, but also the only hope for their deliverance. This was, after all, his fight, his cause, his battle to win or lose. Paris, may the gods be with you. I wish you well, brother. Menelaus, the last time I saw you, I greeted you as a friend. Today, I meet you as my enemy. Today, one of us shall fall for the love of Helen. If it is to be you, will you promise that the kings of Greece leave Troy forever? And if you are the one to grace the gates of Hydus tonight, will Helen be returned to me? Those are the terms. So be it! You have fought for many long years for my honor. Now at last, I will end the war which I started. Aphrodite came to my aid, took me away from the battle. I am saved. You are. I wonder how many will rejoice. Is this the honor a Trojan prince shows in a challenge of his own issue? Is this what Helen left me for? We cannot abandon him. He's our father's son. It's useless. The gods have already determined our fate. Years passed, but the walls of Troy stood firm and impregnable. The long stalemate took a toll on the Greeks, hungry for promised treasure and glory. Among them, Achilles, the greatest of all warriors, king of the Myrmidones, son of the nymph Thetis. Rather than standing idle under the invincible Trojan walls, he led his men against neighboring towns and cities, which fell to his sword like weeds to a scythe. In three years, Achilles conquered twelve cities, which he claimed and plundered, begrudgingly sharing the loot with Agamemnon. 
Everything changed the day he came to the outskirts of Lyrnesos. Your lord Aeneas fled from my blade. No one comes to protect you. Your city and everything in it are forfeit. I will drive you away with my own hands if I must. A brave man. And a foolish one. I gave him the choice to live. He refused it. Monster! Damned be the womb that bore you! Measure your words well, woman. For my mother is a favorite of Zaius. You shame her! For you are nothing but a murderer of farmers and old men! I would have spared him had he yielded. You wield your sword as if it were a beacon of justice, and hide your cruelty under the robe of might. I know who you are, Achilles, and I now know what you are. I too am not afraid of you. I too will not bow to you. Finish me off like you did that old man. It will be easier, for I carry no weapons. She is mine. See that no one claims her. He was my father! While this war raged, blackening the sand with pyres lit for the fallen, far across the sea, the city of Athens was about to face a mortal enemy. The Athenian king Theseus had kidnapped Hippolyte, the mighty queen of the Amazons. Grant us the strength, Father Paris, to free our queen, my sister. And Thessilea, we should attack together before their guards are alerted. We will. Tessalea! Sister! The poor Lute. I cannot stand to see Teseus treat you this way. We must make him suffer for this. I'll cut off his escape at the back while you attack through the main entrance. But leave Teseus to me! Hippolyte. Sound a retreat! Retreat? We have the Athenians on the run. God help me! We must retreat! Now! Retreat! Call the retreat! Hippolyte! Nine years after the thousand ships arrived on the shores of Troy, the Greeks held sway on all the land of Troas, except for Troy and the mighty city of Thebe, ruled by King Aetheon. Agamemnon and Ajax sailed for Thebe, Troy's last ally. Where others had failed, they resolved to conquer. Prince Ajax, Tebe is ours! Yes, King Agamemnon, Tebe is ours. This indeed is a day to be remembered in poetry and song. The day King Agamemnon took Tebe, city of Heracles. Let it be told how her walls trembled in fear of his sword and might. I... I... I am the High Priest of the Great Temple of the Twin Olympians. Apollo is my patron, and, and I, I, I will happily offer you any tribute, anything you desire from our holy treasury in exchange for my daughter's freedom. I do not need your ransom, old priest. The coffers of this city will do for now. Agamemnon, 
He is a high priest. You cannot refuse his pledges. He offers me ransom from the holy treasury of his temple. Will I accept ransom from the gods? I will have nothing to do with him. Take the girl to my ship. The rest put to work. Except the priest. Let him go cower in his temple. You will regret this disrespect, king of the Greeks. A shrill cry rose from the Greek camp. The plague! The plague! Panic spread like wildfire. Men woke up to find the cursed blemish on their skin. Where before they stood with comrades, the afflicted were banished outside the camp to wait for death to end their misery. The council entrusted Achilles and Patroclos to seek out a reason for the curse. Their only hope was to journey to the temple of divine Apollo and beg for mercy, for answers, for deliverance. On their way, Achilles' mother, Thetis, nymph of the seas, came to her son. She warned him that he should not harm Troilus, the youngest Trojan prince, should he encounter him on his journey. Prince Troilus, warned Thetis, was a favorite of Apollo, and killing him would incur the wrath of the gods. Was it pride? Was it arrogance? Or was it pure folly that drove Achilles to ignore his mother's warning and declare that no fate, no god on Mount Olympus could keep him from what he had already resolved to do? The destruction of the house of Priam. I am here, Apollo! You dare! Enter my temple and kill a beloved son of Troy at my feet? You may be the son of one divine, but you are a mortal. Achilleus, the glory you seek is yours. I bestow it upon you, far beyond what any son of man has ever seen or will see. All you must do is learn its cost. The source of this plague is you, High King. And it can be stopped by returning the daughter of this priest. Agamemnon. No one thinks that you should be denied the spoils of war. But the priest answers to Apollo, and to refuse him is an insult to the god. Return the girl, Agamemnon! I will return the girl. But if I must return her, then I shall claim another as my prize. It is my right! Odysseus, Ajax, take the girl from my tent and give her back to this priest of Apollo. But when you are done, go to the tents of Achilles and bring Briseis back to me. I should take your life, not kiss your feet! Very well then. Take my woman away from me. But I will never again fight for you, even when the Trojans have their sharpened bronze in your throat. May the wrath of the gods descend upon you all and curse your offspring in eternity! The news that great Achilles had withdrawn his sword and his Myrmidonis from the fight spread like wildfire in a parched forest. The gods on Mount Olympus bickered and argued among themselves. Achilles' defiance threatened their divine plan 
and their authority was being brought into question. Their resolve was to teach the Greeks a lesson they would not soon forget. Favor was thus removed from the Greeks and bestowed upon the Trojans. Achilles will return and avenge this day. Until then, I curse you and I curse your house, son of Priam. With the Greeks suffering one defeat after another, the Trojans grew bolder. For the sailors knew that when courage abandons the hearts of men, defeat rushes in to fill the void. He had to reignite his troops' morale without delay, at any cost. More often than not, it is insignificant acts that change history. Despite this, it is the results that are commemorated in songs and give birth to eternal legends. We all know how Odysseus defeated the Thracans, Troy's allies, who had secretly flanked the Greek camp. History would have been different had Odysseus not captured a spy who was made to reveal what lay ahead, waiting in the forest beyond the Grecian camps by the mighty river Scamandros. Despite these victories over the Thracans, the Greeks continued to lose ground, for so had the gods decreed. Hector saw the tide turning. Strengthened by divine favor, he rallied his men and led them out of the city. It was time to stop defending Troy's mighty walls, and instead attack the Greeks, cowering behind their wooden ramparts. The Greek nests behind that wall. It's time to crush that nest and push them back into the sea from whence they came. Allies and men of Troy, I swear to you that by the time the sun hits its peak today, that wall shall crumble! No champion shall challenge that fate. You chose that fate, and you can change it if you so will. Hector's assault confused the Greeks. The tables had finally turned. The invaders had now become the invaded. Agamemnon, Ajax, and Menelaus led their armies out of their camps to confront Hector. But the Greeks were not prepared for this Trojan show of defiance. Chaos and disarray crippled Agamemnon's forces, and soon he was surrounded. It fell upon Ajax and Menelaus to rush to the king's defense. I'll get Agamemnon to safety. Some of the men are fleeing! By the gods, Ajax, what do we do? Stone throwers! Our ships will be crushed! We must save them, or we will never see our homes again! I'll hold our ground here. You go up there and stop them! Mighty Ajax, Sarpedon, Telamon stood side by side with Heracles when years ago he vanquished this land. And here am I, his son, to do so once again. 
Telamon was a warrior king. His son shames him. Run, King of Lucaya! Live in shame! Achilles, I cannot do this without you. What? A retreat? Cousin, you've returned at last. As I promised, I will now tell you of Aphrodite's treachery and how Paris was nothing but a pawn in the eternal game played by the gods at the expense of men. Barely a year after Priam had brought his lost son Paris back into his household, the three goddesses, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite, visited the young prince. They asked him to choose the fairest among them, a question mighty Zeus himself refused to answer. For he knew that preferring one meant making an enemy of the other two. So he convinced the goddesses to let Paris make the choice. The three goddesses bribed the young prince with fortune, conquest, and love. And gentle Paris chose love, chose passion, chose Aphrodite. Was it the rashness of youth that blinded the young Paris to make a choice Zeus himself dared not consider? Aphrodite made true her promise and brought Paris to the most beautiful woman on earth, Helen, wife of Menelaus. I have already told you what happened next and the consequence thereof. Because of an act of reckless love, many were brought to pay a hefty price. Cassandra's prophecy was about to come true. But those who never believed what she foretold pointed to Hector, riding a wave of victory over the retreating Greeks. Hector easily breached the Grecian Wall. On his side was Paris, shoulder to shoulder with the rest of the Trojans, not intent on glory, but yearning for redemption. Hera, why do you meddle in our affairs? We might end the war, the suffering, today! You care about others' suffering, but you do not think twice about causing it. You chose lust over sanity. You chose Aphrodite over me! Zeus must have known that he could not choose between you. That is why he passed the choice to me. And you believed you could do what the gods would not. It was never your choice to make, Prince. think that you have saved yourself today, young prince. In the fabric of time, a few more days, weeks, are nothing but a drop in the ocean. Zeus, you tricked me! I was doomed whatever my choice! I am mocked by the gods, but I'll mock them back instead. Watch, as I set the Greek ships on fire! Achilles, he is back. 
What next? You are the torch which brings fire and death to Troy. What next? With Achilles back in the fight, the Greeks found the courage they had lost. And like lions freed from a cage, they sprung forth, their claws sharpened for the kill. But not everything was exactly as it seemed. You see, some time before Achilles was seen leading his men back to battle, King Agamemnon and Odysseus hurried to Achilles' tent. There, I return her to you. I swear I have not touched her. Will you now rejoin the battle? How can you idle here while brave men die? Ugh! What are you doing? The men will follow this armor into the jaws of death. If you will not put it on and help save us from the brink of defeat, I will wear it and lead them myself. Agamemnon is a snake. He comes to beg and never cares to admit his guilt. So it's pride that keeps you, Achilles. I will lead our men to victory, keeping your pride intact and Agamemnon's in ruins. I will go in your stead and only your sword will stop me. You will push the Trojans back to the river, but you will not go across it. Do you understand what I'm telling you, Patroclus? Patroclus, you will not cross the river. Apollo? Achilles! Finally we meet on this, your last day. This is not Achilles. Why is this man wearing Achilles' armor? A sleeping beast was about to be wakened. His roar to be heard across the land. His fury to provoke carnage and ruin never seen before. The vibrant color of spilled blood soon turns into dark patches of putrid waste. The dark and contaminated soil around Troy loomed like a portent of darker deeds yet to come. Woe is to him that believes the gods have the interests of man at heart. As time passed, the tide of war changed at their slightest whim. Not trusting the gods for deliverance, Priam sent King Aeneas to search for allies ready to come to Troy's aid. Aeneas easily convinced Penthesilea to lead her Amazons to Troy. Haunted by Hippolyta's death, the Amazon queen wished only to die. As an Amazon, she believed that an honorable death could only be achieved on the battlefield. Aeneas took pity on the queen and convinced her to seek a cleansing from Priam, a renowned healer of the spirit. The day Hector lifted the blood-soaked helmet from the fallen Patroclus, King Priam welcomed the Amazon's arrival. He readily agreed to perform the cleansing Penthesilea ardently asked for. Together they set out on a journey to the great temple of Apollo and Artemis, where the ritual was to take place. Sister. Her Paul, you day. Sister, I know there's only one true path for an Amazon. To die in battle.
King Priel. It's... It's Prince Hector. O oh, Muse, help me now tell how great Achilles swore dark vengeance for the slaying of Patroclus. Upon Achilles' return to the ranks of the Greeks, Agamemnon and the kings and princes of Greece rejoiced and gave thanks to the same gods they had earlier so vehemently condemned. But Achilles was without his armor. Hector had wrenched it from Patroclus's body and claimed it as his due spoils of battle. It was Thetis, Achilles' mother, who intervened. She came to her son with gifts of solace offered by the gods, the instruments of rightful revenge. This river gave birth to Troy. We are all sons of Scamandros and will not allow it to be tainted by Greek pestilence. It is not I that will pollute the mighty Scamandros but the fetid corpses of your men. Achilleus, I will no longer stand by as you stain my waters with the blood of those I have nourished for generations. Your people will perish, River God. The gods have no say in this, for it is not fate nor divine plan that wills it, but I. No escape, Prince of Death. Have your revenge. Your end will come soon enough. Hector? Why haven't you gone with Priam? Father will be safe with Aeneas. Besides, I have responsibilities here. Achilles. He will be hunting for you on the battlefield. You know what I must do. Hector! Achilles, as we are both men of honor, let us promise that whoever wins today shall return the body of the other to his people. I will promise this to you before the gods. Will you do the same? Lions do not make promises to men, nor wolves to sheep. Your blood will quench Aris's thirst, and your flesh will be left for wild dogs to tear asunder. Prepare yourself. I will rend your limbs from your body and feed them to the dogs. My family will offer abundant gold for my ransom. Take it and give my body back to my father so I may have the right of burning. Promise me this, please. The hand of fate dooms us all, Achilles. I die for my people. Who will you die for? Don't speak of my fate. It's mine to forge, and no god on Mount Olympus will change that! So dies the madman who thought he killed Achilles! His revenge complete, Achilles was free to mourn his fallen friend and lay his ashes in an urn of gold, meant for two, with instructions that if he were to fall in battle, 
His ashes were to be buried in the same urn. On that same day, the Trojans mourned the loss of their fallen champion. For three days, the hills and plains of Troy echoed with the soft sounds of sorrow in place of battle's thunder. Isn't it odd how men celebrate death by keeping the peace and live life to wage war? And when the call went out for war's dark shadow to return, the Trojans were bolstered by a glorious new ally, Desileia and her Amazons. In spite of the cleansing ritual, Penthesilea knew there was only one way to cleanse her guilt, death in battle. With this in mind, she led her Amazons into battle, searching for the one who could grant her an honorable warrior's death, Achilles. We are Amazons, unafraid of battle. Unafraid of men! Unafraid of death! Why are you here, Queen of the Amazons? And why do you ally yourself against the inevitable? Horus bids us help the innocent. You, Odysseus, are amongst the guilty. I may not be able to best you, Amazon, but we shall see how you fare against the might of Achilles. Coward! You value your life over your honor! Quickly, Aeneas! He may lead us straight to the beast! My queen, remember, the gods play with us and tease us for their amusement. You bear no guilt for what they have caused to happen. Thank you, fair prince. This is my time. Penthesilea, it is not the beauty of your countenance that I face, but the blood of an enemy that must be spilled upon the earth. And it is but another warrior that I face, another man too proud to face his death. I know your story, brave queen. If only we had met elsewhere. Away from this bloody game we play. With Hector and Penthesilea both fallen at the hands of Achilles, Troy looked for a new hero to save them from the jaws of the lion. From the distant lands of Ethiopia came the warrior King Memnon, the mightiest warrior of the East. On his shoulders rested the hopes of Paris and all the people of Troy. <laughs> You knew all along, didn't you? You and Cassandra. Hector is dead because of my selfishness. And Troilos, and Penthesilea, and Sarpedon. Enough, Paris. More is in store for you, Paris. Who knows? You may even find some solace in what's to come. Solace is beyond my grasp. By the gods! What? Memnon has fallen. Achilles is charging the gate! Quickly! Achilles! King Achilles, we're being overrun. We cannot last within the city much longer. We will face each other again! Gods above, guide me. If this is your will, do not fail me now.
It's done. When great men fall, gods, men, and beasts turn silent. Legends tell us that Ajax was struck by madness, victim of Athena's rage. And yet we all know that we readily attribute to the gods all that we know nothing of. Those who followed Ajax tell of signs that all was not well with their prince. Did it start the day he saw his cousin Achilles fall? That day he carved his way through the Trojan hordes, and with Odysseus's help, retrieved Achilles' body and carried it safely to his camp for proper burial. With the discovery of a narrow secret passage carved in the rock beneath Troy's walls, a passage used to bring supplies into the city, Ajax and Odysseus launched a daring desperate raid on the Temple of Athena inside Troy to steal a relic known as the Palladium, which prophecy held must be taken from the temple if Troy were ever to fall. The Palladion was taken and Ajax carried it out of the city. Is it because of this sacrilege that Athena tricked his vision to see what was not there? Did she kindle the anger and despair that made him see enemies even when he gazed upon friends? The kings of Greece insult me! I helped Odysseus bring Achilles' body, but he is awarded with Achilles' armor. I carry the Palladion, but Odysseus gets to keep it. What isn't given to Odysseus is given to your brother. I have earned my share of the glory too, but where is my reward? Your words are seditious. Do you plot against us? No, but I do claim my reward. Traitor. Menelaus. No. Stop. Menelaus. I said stop! done. You've murdered the man you swore to protect. Achilles. Achilles. No. No, no. No, no. No. After Ajax's death, the Trojans woke to a sight they had dreamt of for ten long years. The beaches of Troy were deserted. Where once stood Agamemnon's tent, stood a wooden statue of a horse. It is a plea to Athena for forgiveness, to placate the goddess's anger for the theft of the Palladium. And so the Trojans brought it into the walls, hoping to gain Athena's favor and to leave the invaders to face her wrath as they fled across the seas. So easily do men believe that which they yearn for. But in 
the silence of the night, the Greeks returned to the beaches like prowling wolves. And as Troy slept, the statue quivered and opened, spilling from its belly the ruse which would finally end the war. Odysseus, your plan has worked. Listen how they celebrate. We'd better hurry to the gate. Our armies will be waiting. Paris, stand down! You will not harm Helen! Paris, wait! People do not deserve what I have brought upon them, especially sweet Helen and my father. Please be merciful upon them. You dare ask for mercy from us? No! My son, my son. No! <laughs> Shame you have brought upon me, upon Sparta. Menelaus, enough have died. All of my sons have perished. My city has perished. I have nothing left to live for. I ask only one act of mercy. Take all of the treasures of Troy, but allow some vestige of this once great race to remain in this land. Gentle old one. You think to deny us the spoils of a hard-fought war with pitiful words, ancient one? Your land is ours now by right, and its people shall be wiped from the earth to be forgotten forever. But I will grant you a single mercy. I will make your end a quick end. Agamemnon, that wasn't necessary. He is the reason we fought here all these years. The reason why so many princes and men of Greece have died. The world must bear witness to the fall of the House of Priam. The oath fulfilled, the kings of Greece set sail for home, leaving behind them the blackened ruins of a once glorious city. The gods took pause, not to mourn, not to pity. The gods are not capable of such human weakness. They paused to plot vengeful retribution against all those who dared think they were the architects of history, conquerors of fate, masters of their own lives. But do not hastily retire, for our story is not yet complete. The night the horse was brought into the city, the citizens of Troy celebrated with passion and abandon. Exhausted, they retired to their beds, Finally, to sleep, and not to dream. Deep into the night, Aeneas woke to the sound of mayhem and madness. He rushed to his window and watched the Greek hordes plunder and ravage the sleeping city like tiny insects scouring the carcass of a wild dog. There was little he could do except secure his friends and family with this in mind, he rushed to Priam's palace. Aeneas! Where is your father? I will take care of my father. But you, Aeneas, you must go take care of your family. Troy is no more. All is lost. Cassandra! One torch burns a city. Another is carried to safety. 
Aeneas, you will lead those who remain to a new shore and found an empire greater than Greece and Troy combined. An empire that will rule the world for a thousand years, never to be equaled in the story of man. Let her go. She is mad. Aeneas, the fallen walls will lead you to safety. Go. Get your family. Save who you can. I will stay and finish what I began. Paris, I cannot- No, Aeneas! Live! Aeneas, look, Alpha and Omega. This is the one that spawned the coward. And this is the coward that spawned this hell. Let it be known to all who tempt the ire of the Greeks. This is how they perish. Agamemnon, this atrocity does not become a king. I am Agamemnon. I will be remembered as the conqueror of Troy, of Tebe, and all of the cities that infest this land. What is left of them will now bend to Agamemnon's will, and so shall you! So easy to destroy in a night what takes generations to build. Is man forever doomed to repeat this folly? So, end the Troy. For Aeneas and all who had followed him, it was the beginning of a long and arduous journey, spurred by what Cassandra she who was never believed had foretold. Aeneas, you will lead those who remain to a new shore and found an empire greater than Greece and Troy combined. An empire that will rule the world for a thousand years, never to be equaled in the story of man.